to a special date, the 17th of the 7th, 17. Say that quicker than that, Jess. The 17th <laughs> of the 7th, 17. I did it. Very well, well done. done. Well done. Girls, Sue Ellen, Rouge and Hello. Anna. Hello. It's your last time on the show. It You're is. all sacked. Oh, oh, I'm only joking, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Oh, gosh. I would never sack you, my girls. How are we? This Good evening. Well. well, thank you. Yeah, you? Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm really well because the weather's rubbish. I was about to say, I'm <laughs> well <laughs> done a bit fed up with the Levante already, yeah? Yeah, it tires you out, the Levante. It just You know, it does. Makes everything yeah. drag. Yes, but that is true. Like you like bad weather. You're I bit just don't like summer. I don't Boring. like the summer and the heat and the sweat and the feeling uncomfortable at work. So having this overcast it's kind all right. of... Refreca. Muggy weather. Because if you can't be outside. Yeah. I do like it. OK, <laughs> right. we've got a jam-packed programme, as usual, with all the girls and their contributions coming up. So we're going to start with this one. Who do you think, in a breakup suffers the most? Do women feel it more or do men feel it more? Take a look. We now know that it is an addiction. We know that romantic love is an addiction, a perfectly wonderful addiction when it's going well and a perfectly horrible addiction when it's going poorly. When it's going poorly, you have to treat it as an addiction. Throw out the cards and letters or put them in the box and put them in the attic. Don't write, don't call, uh, don't show up where this person is likely to be. Uh, go out with old friends, get hugs uh, uh, from old friends. That drives up the oxytocin system and calms you down. Get some physical exercise that drives up the dopamine system that gives you energy and optimism and focus and motivation. It also drives up uh, the endorphins so that some of the pain goes away. We also know now that when you have uh, been rejected in love, any kind of uh, Advil or aspirin uh, actually helps take away some of the physical pain. And the last thing that uh, we've discovered is that the farther you get away from that moment of being dumped, the less activity there is in a brain system linked with feelings of deep attachment. So time does heal. Just don't do anything stupid and the day will come when that person who's been camping in your head is out and you wake up in the morning and you realize that yesterday you never thought about them at all. You know, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. And that's what you're shooting for when you've been dumped. So you see, there's a lot to take on when there is a breakup, lots of types of feelings. And the very curious one is actual physical pain. Mm. So many people actually think that dying of a broken heart, and we've heard all of that before, doesn't exist. It's just a term, it's just a reference to the, the pain that we feel, but it's not actually physical. Well, it does. Yeah. We do actually have physical yeah. pain. Yeah. And um, I, for one, have felt it. And so have I. Yeah. Being dumped is the pits. I remember being dumped a few, well, no, long time ago before I married, obviously. Mm. And it was just awful. Yeah. You just feel reject, uh, awful, awful. I haven't been dumped very often in my life. I think twice lot, was enough. It has a lot to do with what's going through your life at the same time, not just in your relationship. Because yeah, obviously, in you your circumstances, no, you yeah, were going time, through a bad terrible, time as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it makes it all even worse. Like, the good things you've got to hang on to are also leaving you and yeah. things you lose a part of yourself in any breakup of any relationship. But I think generally talking about the gender differences and how you deal with breakup, I think women generally, and, and, and this is backed by studies, they tend to suffer more deeply at the time. Yeah. They grieve more the loss of the relationship and that part of themselves that they've lost within the relationship. Yeah. And I think men just deal with it differently. And women, I mean, how many times have you watched a movie and you've seen the woman, you know, with a box of tissues in her pyjamas or her hair undone, Ice cream. Bridget, Bridget friends Jones. come <laughs> over and, you know, all that type of uh, camaraderie between female friends to yes. help you feel better, to analyze what went wrong. I think that process is really actually very healthy because you allow yourself to sit with the emotion which is uncomfortable because any grief and pain is not pleasant yeah. and the instinct is to want to reject it or like skim over it or move on which is probably what men do more readily yeah and i think women through that process it, it's it helps them heal <laughs> and they're able to come out of it emotionally stronger i think men express it completely differently yeah for sure they they kind of probably come across a bit indifferent at the beginning and they come out all macho but at the end of the day they they yeah. get a lot i mean their friends don't come round with a box of tissues chocolate and <laughs> no, the friends, the friends, yeah. they, they <laughs> friends go out and get drunk they're like 
Hablando. I read, I read this really funny thing. I wrote it down. Men become dogs. They go for every hookup they can oh, just to God. get over that one. Well, is it that, is. Is it that is. true? Maybe the men in the... Uh, we, no, we have to generalise. I was going to say, that's too general. Well, yeah, yeah. I know we men have to like buried themselves. But I think another thing I read is Very interesting. Deep. They're scared of intimacy and they run like hell if a woman wants to, to move in or to take it further or... Well, straight they, off. They don't want to commit. No. I, I think, think men are more com- prone to get entering into rebound relationships, I think. I well, think men more, are. Men, I think, are more prone than women. I think if a woman has kids, she tends to pick herself up and get on with it. Oh, well, she yeah. has to. Can't they, faff around. Well, can I'm not really? saying whether she has, but, but she just does. I, think, I don't think a guy... Gu- I think a guy... I don't know, maybe, maybe guys with kids react in the same way, but I don't... Yeah. I think a woman... We can't like, generalise, but... I think, yeah, I think the studies also say in... in Opposite to what I said earlier, that women take they take longer at the time, but they deal with it better. They sort of go through the process, you go through the pain to overcome it, really. And um, men just move on. They distract themselves. They get more prone to get angry. They're more it's maybe self-destructive. I mean, this is generalizing. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are some men who are very self-analytical and will do all the inside work to maybe sort of determine what went wrong and how can they improve themselves for the next relationship. But I think I think generally, you know, we're different species. Men have also been taught Completely. yet to to sort of mask their feelings. Yes. So maybe they want to... And they to don't pl- share either, so they don't yeah. have that kind of relief, if you yeah. like, of, yeah. of and what's pent up inside. And also, biologically, women, I think, when they sort of select a life mate, they, they you know, there's a more of a parental investment, maybe, than men would have been sort of meeting at the time. Because women tend to lose they, more. Well, because they, they have children they exactly. and they select their mates maybe more exactly. carefully. So if they lose, they've got exactly. more to exactly what you're saying. They're lose. losing more. Yeah. The other thing I've noticed about men difference to women is is that they hold resentment for a lot longer. I I know one particular breakup where I find that if 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 things have if it's been a nasty breakup that men will hold resentment against that woman for many years to come. They don't let it go. They don't move forward in that respect. They can't cover it up. And you can see that resentment come up in many different ways in their other relationships as well. And women tend to heal and move on and forgive. Yes. Well, I, th- I don't, wouldn't want to comment on the forgiving part. Because <laughs> I'm sure men do as well, but I think they just grieve more successfully, more yes. healthily. Well, so maybe they're in a better position later on to feel more forgiving. But it also depends on the reason for the breakup. I mean, assuming that they're breaking up because it's just not working, well, then they're probably go- both going to go through similar things yeah. if they're breaking up because one of them has moved on and is seeing someone else, then obviously the other the other half is going to... Yeah, whatever's done, it's going to pass up Exactly, going to go through a much harder time. So whichever way we look at it, though, breakups are very, very hard, and perhaps one thing that will help men that they can learn from women is to share, and that's definitely something that will help them through it because there's no doubt they may feel it just as badly. I yeah. think breaking up is, is good in a way because it's, a, it's a, a, learn, it's a lesson learned, a life oh, lesson. Oh, absolutely. And I think you need to, if, if you're young, go through a breakup yeah. to know maybe yeah. what r- real love is like. I don't yeah. know. And apparently biology's on the side of men on this one because when they meet someone, their testosterone levels That's drop. That's exactly what yeah, they're doing. And, and, and then when they bro- oxytocin, which is the bond they don't hormone, have to hunt anymore. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then naturally, when they leave the relationship, the relationship, relationship goes up again. the testosterone yeah. goes up It's amazing, isn't it? It's what incredible. human nature is and biology. We are all animals, animals at the end of the day. Yeah. OK, well, what do you think at home? Have you suffered from a broken heart? Do you recognise that ache, that terrible ache and how long it takes to pass? OK, I will love to have your comments at the powder room at gbc.gi if you want to drop me an email, by all means. OK, moving on. Uh, we've got Outside My Window with Rouge. <laughs> Is. There you go. <laughs> it's holiday season and there's loads of tourists about and I've been studying them outside my window looking out at all the different kinds of people so we go from uh, the fashion police where they wear all kinds of strange things and we have more and more which is really fascinating more and more people wearing using umbrellas First, it was the Asians, mostly, who used to cover themselves Mm -hmm. up with an umbrella. But now, a lot of other people, especially Scandinavians, they walk around with these quite large umbrellas because they don't want any sun at all. They don't want any sun on their faces. A lot of them are covered 
in, in suntan lotion, but are covered thick, <laughs> even just for walking up and down Main Street. Okay. It's not that sunny. Yeah, it's, uh, a it's, reminder, it's amazing. It's a reminder that we're They're so really exposed conscious we, we about... Forget, huh? Yes. Yes. Let's have a look at what a uh, Main Street's looking like lately outside your window. <laughs> we'll show yep. some GVs to you now. The other thing is, this fascinates me, is um, these people who have package tours, right? Yeah. So they go, they're on a, sh on a ship and they can eat as much as they like. Yeah. And they come to Jib and they don't necessarily, there we go, they don't necessarily want to go and have a meal in a restaurant. They don't want to spend money mm. in a restaurant. So what do they do? They bring their packed lunch with them with Princess Cruises on the outside. They sit on the bench below my window and they, the three of them or four of them, whoever it is, and they have their little packed lunch with okay. drink, yeah, with a half a bottle of wine, huh? with all, <laughs> and the whole thing. Yeah, but the worst thing there, Rouge, was the... <laughs> it's I fascinating. Worked at, I worked at my brother's restaurant we... for years and we used to have them sitting at our tables Doing that. with their packed lunch. And then ordering a coffee. When not? Ooh. This is why people ask it's me a when, there's a, one, when there's one. a big cruise liner. People ask me, it's just you must make a killing. Yeah. When there's so, and I'm like, no, because no. it's all included. No. Yeah, so it's that, all included. You talk about the sun, the umbrellas yes. and things. I, I can understand that. how People that are really nowadays. conscious now about the sun. I Lo think it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Uh, we, do, we don't realise how dangerous it is, um, especially me. I'm always in the sun, hence the tan. And I don't even think my mother's always telling me off because she said it's so bad for yeah. you. And it is, actually. Somebody it was is. telling me this um, this year. So, well, I'd heard of it before, but I always forget to wear protection on your hair. Yeah, Ooh, as I've well. Done that. No, as well. Yeah, they they because sell you, something have, that's yeah, good for the for the chlorine and it's good for the sun. Yeah, but you, we spend our lives like putting cream all over ourselves, but the hairs we'll just, get the hair. Yeah. yeah, it's funny what you said earlier about how when you go travelling you wear all sorts of things. Yeah, I look terrible when I travel. <laughs> <laughs> I just wear whatever, man. Those comfortable mismatched outfits, and I do the whole tourist look thing. I embrace it, so really I can understand. You know, you travel. As soon as you lock a camera over your head, you're a tourist wherever you are. Yeah, exactly. You're in Chip and you're going somewhere. Yeah. And, and makeup, forget it. No makeup. It's like a time to. It's a complete <laughs> time all natural. Off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's one more thing before we finish. The yeah. breeze blocks that have been put in Main Street to yes. stop somebody going... Well, they're being used for all sorts of things. The other night, Wednesday night, Wild Wednesday, uh -huh. they're great for holding drinks if you're going to the cash point. So oh, we had really? a whole line of drinks, yeah, on one of them, which was quite... I was going to film it, and then I thought, I can't really do that, because then I'm going to get a load of stick from the people who are doing it. Yeah. So you have to be really yeah. careful. But anyway, that was one thing. The other thing it's used for is jumping over. So the younger kids, Leave while they're waiting for their parents to go into one <laughs> shop or the other, doing, trying to jump over. So you have the jumping over and then they're holding on like a, like a, a, a vaulting horse. Uh, Do you yeah, remember the vaulting horses in school? Just like not a, allowed Hold anymore. on and then boom, <laughs> legs over. So yeah, all those things. Seats, they're even putting up posters on them now. Really? They're advertising different events, yeah. So... It's they, funny how everything's it, adaptable. It, oh, no, they find yeah. something and they'll change it into something but else. But I'm very happy to say the, the, the little bags from the restaurant opposite are still appearing on my tree. Oh, <laughs> yes. With the sandwiches yeah. and the salads that are left them, over. Yeah. People are taking them. Yeah, That's great. Well, so, that's Main Street does become, with, with the tourists, it's as you wonder, it's big enough because it really is a challenge. Today, to today was pretty bad. You have people. to do the shop. I call yes. it the shopper's shuffle because you come out just to buy bread and you have to just go to Parliament Lane and I'm like that. With the kids in tow. <laughs> <laughs> Going through everyone. Yeah, it's mad. But, but still, I mean, we're grateful for the tourists. They spend money in Jib. We want, the, we want them to keep coming, and they, they seem to yeah, like coming. Yeah, but usually so, they're in masses. Know. That's when yeah, it's that's a problem. That's a good thing. Yeah. OK, so, moving on. So, yes, lots of tourists to Jib is always <laughs> a good thing. Food for Thought is next. Sue Ellen? OK, this week we're discussing GMOs. Take a look at this clip. Transgenic foods. You think you eat healthily? You're against genetically manipulated foods? Just like you, more than 70% of European citizens say no to transgenic foods. Still, you too have long since eaten transgenic foods without even knowing. For example, 70% of worldwide soy production is already genetically modified. Such plants are being produced by the introduction of foreign genes. In this way, two main new characteristics emerge. Either the plants are resistant to phytotoxins, or they produce toxins themselves, which kill pests and other animals. These plants then spread uncontrollably as wind and insects disseminate the pollen. 
90% of all genetically modified plants are cultivated in America and exported to Europe on a grand scale. All in all, 80% of all transgenic plants are being processed for pet food and are largely fed to production animals. In this way, genetically modified organisms end up in your food too. Legally though, this does not need to be labelled on meat, eggs and milk products. Perhaps you're wondering whether this is dangerous at all. Well, there are already animal studies which document verifiable health consequences. And what's bad for animals can become dangerous for humans too. It's just that no long-term studies have been conducted on this up till now. But wait, we are all part of the long-term study already. And we are all the guinea pigs of the big agricultural companies. So this concerns us all. Our world is no experimental laboratory. Stop genetic manipulation. There are a lot more risks. Get informed. OK, as crazy as that sounds, it gets even crazier. Um, basically, every genetically modified crop becomes... Um, it's like a product. It's something that's been created by a scientist, so it's no longer something that nature's produced. So you can patent it. So basically, there's, there's one of the biggest producers of corn and sugar beet and soy in the States has patent on their products. So if their crop is growing on the neighbor's land, the law protects the crop and not the land. So basically, the crop belongs to the company. And I mean, it can get to a stage where the owner of the other land can be evicted because this crop has taken over his land. And because they're genetically modified, they can withstand an incredible amount of um, pesticides that would not normally be... be yeah, they um, survive, they, they? No, 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 at all. Um, so are you saying crop, then no? that I can patent my big, fat, juicy pear, which is bigger and juicier than average, if it's so that nobody modified... can produce another big, fat, juicy pear? Not that one. So basically, not that one in particular. this big company that I'm not going to name, but um, I'm sure a lot of people know who I'm talking about, um, they've got people who work for them that actually go testing crops in neighbours' lands, and if they find a crop that is actually theirs, they can actually prove that it's theirs because it's genetically modified. Um, automatically, the crop... Obviously, it's theirs, so th the other farmer can't do anything with it. He can't sell it because it's not his to sell, and it's in on his land, and the law protects the, yeah. the actual... Obviously, because it's patented, it's like... So it's a big business where we're all suffering. Absolutely. I think the, what I've got biggest issue with this is that in, in the European Commission requires that you label GMO foods as yes. such. Yes. But, but the US doesn't have such a requirement. No. So the, 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 what they're doing is taking our choice away so you don't maybe know that what you're eating has been genetically modified. No, and, and if, that if you're terrible. eating, if say you're eating chicken that hasn't been injected, like we've seen clips in the past where like the size of a chicken breast is originally yes. this big and it becomes this big, if the chicken hasn't, the chicken itself hasn't been genetically modified, it doesn't have to be labelled, obviously, because it's not genetically modified, but what the chicken has is ate, eating. Exactly. Is genetically, is genetically modified. modified. So you're getting it anyway. So you're getting it anyway. No, yeah. What's freaked me out is the corn. I like eating corn. Well, and I soya. Have, I and haven't I, eaten... And I've been I buying have... soya recently because I've decided that our, my family, we have too much red meat. So you read about the red meat and all the hormones and all the rest. So I thought, right, we're going to buy corn. And I'm yes. going to do spaghetti bolognese with corn. See if the kids notice the difference. They notice the texture was different. Yeah, usually so here am I, really texture. proud that I've managed to get a spaghetti bolognese. It tastes nearly the same as the real McCoy. Yes, but and it's, now it's I not see organic. This. No, it's not organic. It's just no. normal corn. I didn't think it was organic. So they promoted it, it something? So no, it's not that it's, healthy it, either. It's even more complicated. Um, so in a depression. In, I know. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's one so of the small pleasures of life. So what do you do? So what do, we, what do well, we look, do? In, in Spain, unfortunately... I mean, in Spain you can get organic products, corn. but the problem in Spain is that um, there are companies that can actually buy their organic certificate. They literally pay no. and they get a stamp no. and, it and, it's not a, and it's not really organic. So... Porque estamos las mismas. Uh, estamos las mismas. Okay, for me, exactly. just walking around any supermarket has become stressful. It is stressful. Because you can't have this, you can't have that. Because you know what? If, if and this it's a is real a challenge as a parent to cook for my kids. In, in I just, this case, yeah, we, ignorance, more limited. ignorance really is bliss. Because once you know, like I was saying, I haven't eaten regular sweet corn in four years. 
I'm going to stop. I, I'm going to stop. And no, I you used to eat, you know, the geek goes. The but then you were saying, I love you don't geekos. Need geekos. We have in the beach. I do, yeah. You haven't eaten them either. I, no, because they're not organic. So if I eat a geeko, it's like. But, well but what were you but, saying your shopping bill is? Because not all of us can afford exactly. that kind of I, shopping if you've got a yeah, family the of four. The, the last exactly. deal I paid at Morrison's was £239, and I have a husband and two cats. Yeah, well, if and you three, had two uh, kids like mine who eat bags, no? I, I don't know how you do. Yeah, and I had like three bags full. But, you know, I buy, I like rice milk, yes. so I buy organic rice milk. I suppose I, I deprive myself of other yeah, things because yeah. it's not like, you know, yeah. but I, I'd want to eat well. Because is, once foods, you know, you know. And exactly. It, can't not you, know. Exactly. You don't walk into a supermarket and just go, ah, it doesn't matter, this time will take... No, if, it's, if the one that you should get is there, you end up getting it. Yeah. And, the and thing it's is, as GMA Foods have been around a relatively short amount of time, there's not enough tests. No, we're the guinea pigs, really. Well, we completely. don't know the effects long term. They're finding that, that it can produce that they think, although allergies. it's not backed up. Yeah, one allergies of, one are of the, pe the, the pesticides that's most commonly used on crops, I think, is called gly glyphos glyphosate. Yeah, I saw it somewhere. Is it glyphosate? Okay. Yes, and okay. that, um, <laughs> there it is. And um, the World Health Organization has just declared that it is probable carcinogen. So, well, oh, they're poisons. Yes, well, there's, there's been a study that, and the amount that they're using on the crops, because the crops can can withstand like ridiculous levels of this stuff. Like, so what are the pros to GMO foods? There has to be some pros. The money to... can produce more. Well, can we? Can okay. we? There's feed? less. Can we solve there's, world there's, hunger there's by There's less waste food. with GMO food because obviously, if you have a field full of whatever and half of it is eaten by some beetle yeah, or God exactly. knows whatever, you're going to lose half of it. In this case, whatever you're planting, you're you're gonna you're literally going to. You don't need as much land either. You so don't farmers need... have more land to use for other things. Absolutely, so they can fit a lot more in the amount of space that they've got. The so why is... isn't world hunger solved then? Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, it's it's complicated. Um, this is there's there's a lot of money involved, as in, usual. In, uh, of yeah. course, that's that's what it's about. Um, that's what everything is about, money. OK, the reality is, the sad reality is the onus is on us as a consumer to do our research, to, you know, to, you know, question all the labels. It just puts pressure on us, which is, you know, it happens with so many products in the market and it's just unfair and I'm having a whinge. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some When some it's about goods. food, you want to be able to enjoy it and it's got yeah, to but stay, more, but, but you there are like, other If you elements. go to the supermarket, more and more people, you see more and more. My mum always looks, because she's very healthy, and always looked, and I used to think, what is she looking at all these ingredients for? But now I do it, yeah. and loads of other people do yes. it. Yeah, yes. And you see them in the supermarket saying, does it have this, does it have that, does it, you know? It's not just that. Yeah, no, yes. Pero, you, you, or at least but, it totally re removes the enjoyment of, of eating food. Or at least going out to a restaurant and then you start to question when and where does this come from or this is well, organic. This is, this is control. This is, this is, you can never know. Well I, well, I mentioned in the green room on Saturday Night Live, there's a clip that's actually taking the mickey out of these situations and there's a couple that goes to a restaurant and they're asking yeah. where the chicken's been reared, blah, blah, yeah, and it yeah, gets yeah. to a stage where the, the, the waitress comes out with the certificates and the names of the chickens <laughs> and where they were born yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the client's going, did they look happy? Yeah. And the, you know, <laughs> I go in. So how far are you going to take yeah. it? But... It's, it's we're where going we're down heading. that road. Yeah. But it does open up other things by by creating these... these um, well, to do with vaccines, for example. Scientists have engineered plants to produce vaccines, proteins and other pharmaceutical goods in a process called farming, so with pH. So there are other things that it's good for. Better nutrition. By modifying some GMO foods in terms of mineral or vitamin content, companies can supply more necessary nutrients and help file, fight... Well, what I said, help fight world wildwide malnutrition, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization. Uh, vitamin A is enhanced, so people are suffering less from vitamin A deficiencies. Uh, seeds are genetically changed for multiple reasons, which include improving resistance to insects and generating healthier crops, according to Healthline.com. This can lower the risk of crop failure, make crops better resistant to extreme weather, so they have yeah, a better chance say, of surviving yeah, a drought. in a drought, a better chance yeah, of surviving. Not just about the pesticides. In a hurricane, for example. Water. No, we have to go back to planting so our own food. 
<laughs> we have to grow our own food. This is it. That's you know there was <laughs> that old back series to. on. What was it called? Um, na neighbors or good? Na I can't remember. Anyway, and it was about this couple who lived in a normal semi-detached, but in their garden they grew all their own food. And they lived this lifestyle of, and I've been thinking about that recently. It's just that Jib can't cater. Yes. Where do you think? Exactly. We don't have where do you grow? Well, there's there's um, a, a gross like a guy in in the UK who had a fruit and veg store, and he said that in the last couple of years he was selling more, going to a roundabout, and. Yeah, with with boxes and more. stuff, selling more there than in the actual shop because people saw the stuff there and thought, this it's guy's a farmer, or... exactly. There's a few places in Jib now that do p real, you know, orga proper organic. Well, I tell well, you, the last time I had organic strawberries was about three years ago. Um, I used to get this organic box uh, delivered home and apart from the fact the strawberries were a colour that I'd never seen them before, they were like... I don't know, like burgundy, almost like red wine colour, but they weren't, they weren't off or soft. They were just very, very dark red. And after I tasted that strawberry, every other strawberry I've tasted since is like... Pales in comparison. Yeah. That's so there is a rubbish. real difference to the taste. Absolutely. And, uh, like, yeah, you you get tell. old people saying, no tomate, no tan como ante. Yeah. No, truly, they are not. They're not. They're paler and stuff. They're aren't paler. They? they all look exactly the same size, shape, colour, absolutely everything. Well, what about those people who make square watermelons? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I I mean, that. And papaya, there. that was They're another one. To pack, yes, I was talking about that before because modified. papaya, for example, is really good for digestion. Yet it's one of these genetically modified yeah, foods. Yeah, because I think papayas. That it, yes, yes, I completely. Know, yeah. Well. That's what I was not real enough about not it. Not completely, but, but in, in countries where they sell a lot of papaya, they, it's been genetically modified because I think that they were having problems with pests and obviously... But things but, like uh, seedless grapes could, as well and watermelons that come without any yeah. seeds. That's, yes. that's not natural. I never it's buy those. Natural. I mean, that's, my kids are given watermelons. It's like they only have to pick out one of two or three. I remember the Sheikah was there, they are taking out oh, the yeah. seeds. <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah. No, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I do tend to eat fruit only in its season. But you can yes. now find fruits that you all year round. Do you know that's one of the strongest antioxidants is inside the seeds of the grape? You actually got to munch them. Yes, it's true. And now we don't even have the seed in the grape. Mm. That was a good thing. Mm. Yes, it was a good I've thing. I've got to say that there is a, a, um, a little fruit place in Parliament Lane that only sells fruit and vegetable in season. That's very And I very try good. and go, and he's only because he brings a lot of it from Morocco, and he comes once a week, and when he sells out, he shuts up shop. Oh, wow. I don't know if many people mm. know it. No, I shouldn't I didn't. be saying it now because everyone's going to go. But I go on a Monday morning and I get all the Everything bits. fresh, fresh. Yes, and it's what's in season. So if they don't have yes. strawberries, I don't get strawberries. If they don't have oranges, like now isn't really the season for no. oranges. So I, yeah. But there's other things which, you know, this, cherries, this plums, box that I used to clams, get was like and, that. Yes, yeah, things yeah. like that. So um, melons. At the end of the day, that uh, saying is always going to be correct. We are what we eat. I was eat. just thinking that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are oh, what we completely. eat. Completely. And whilst you're settling down to your supper, no doubt, and wondering <laughs> what is in it, uh, we'll leave you to it for just a couple of minutes. Join us in part two. If you have a vision, let us create the inspiration. We pride ourselves on the ability to make you look good and feel unique. Classic beauty is a new addition to our modernized salon. Go on, you deserve a treat. With a body wrap detox, you will feel complete. Classic cuts, hair and beauty. Look unique, feel complete. When you look around a house, 
Just consider that everything that is there has been chosen, whether it's a family photograph that's been pinned to the fridge or an heirloom that's been inherited. Each item tells a story. And there are also clues for you at home to guess who lives in a house like this. Welcome to There's No Place Like Home. Welcome back. Okay, just before we move on, I want to shout out to a lovely girl in Bristol who watches us on a regular, regular basis and always sends me a message with comments. So, hi, Rhiannon, this one's for you. Uh, dying to see you when you come in September. Oh, That's can I do one too? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I've got to say hello to Sally, who's, list, who's watching us in Lancashire. She watches every week as well. Oh, that's and nice. Can, can I do one too? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Mum. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My as well, and I can you man. Nice say hello to Willa. Willa? I saw, yes, I saw her at a wedding. She said, I always watch her on TV. Oh, that's, oh hi, Willa. that's very nice. Yes, to all our viewers who tune in, thank you very much for tuning in. OK, we have something that is never better said coming up next. Well, as we all know, words are powerful. They can be used for good or for bad, to raise up or to put people down, to harm, hinder, to incite violence or to inspire and um, console. So how, what, how do we use our words? First, I've got a quote by the wonderful Nelson Mandela. It's quite long, so please bear with me. It is never my custom to use words lightly. In 27 years in prison, have done anything, it was to use the silence of solitude to make us understand how precious words are and how real speech is in its impact on the way people live and die. I can't stick to one, so here's a second. <laughs> this is by King Solomon of the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, and he said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And one last one by Mother Teresa, that wonderful, beautiful soul. She said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but the echoes are truly endless. And I think that's really going to give some food for thought. And um, we're following it up with a clip. And this is some research carried out by Dr. Masaru Emoto. <laughs> Something like hard that. Hard to pronounce and hard to remember. But anyway, he carried out some experiments and he exposed water to different words and um, to see what effect it would have on the water. Because at the end of the day, we're made up of, well, I think, almost 70% water, as is the planet. So if the words that we use and the intention, which is very important, behind those words, has an impact on the molecular structure of water, imagine what it does to us and the planet in which we live. Take a look. experiment, he took a, a bottle, well, a glass of water, exposed it to this word, love, hate, or whatever it is that we saw, music, and then they froze it and they just looked at the molecular structure oh, from a droplet to see the, like, the formation, the crystallization of, of, the, of the water, you know, and isn't it incredible the difference in, yeah. in the, you know, the, 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 the words which, which have good intent, which have positive um, meanings, and are just stunning, stunning um, representations, and then, the, you know, the, the harsher, negative, words that maybe don't contribute as much are infinitely more... Was it down more... to the vibrations? Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, exactly. Was each word has vibrational value, um, not just, I mean, it's an energy. It's 
we're talking about energy level, you know. Uh, there was this other experiment, well, it, it came about by, by chance. This woman, Doreen Virtue, and she's quite, quite known in her field, she was recording a podcast, and then she, they noticed this on, on, the, on the computer. I don't really know the t technology that they used, but uh, each word had its literal graphic representation on the screen. And likewise, the words like love, angel, peace, you know, they, they were represented maybe like radiant, like starbursts of energy lines. They were expansive, they were generous. And then by contrast, words like the same experiment, really, like hate and dislike and jealousy, they were sort of constricted and, they, you know, they were sort of, you know, reduced. They didn't have that sort of beautiful image. And if you look really, for example, they did the experiment with admiration and jealousy. If you look at the intent behind, if you admire someone, the sort of sentiment is that the, you have you, for you're looking up to someone, you're admiring them, yes, you have, so it's you trust, yes. yeah, you trust the universe and you, you think, well, if that person is, can achieve that, maybe I feel inspired to do the same. Whereas with jealousy, the, there's a, an inner belief in a lack. So you think, well, why, could, why does that person have that? And why can't I? And there's resentment, there's negativity. And it's incredible how it's, it's it, it science. It's a thing getting. Yeah, that it's, it's been proven, like visually, you know, that the sort yeah. of difference in, in the impact. And as I said earlier, how, how crucial are the words that we speak? The effect that they have on us emotionally, physically, like for instance, oh, I can't, I, mean, I don't have enough time to do this. Or that sort of self-condemning in a way, it makes you feel bad or guilty, but you could rephrase it and say, you know, I appreciate all that I do in the time that I have. And that is like approving of yourself and your efforts and saying to yourself, you know, I'm confident, I can, I can find time for more, I'm, I'm still achieving. And it's just really pretty much saying the same thing, but just the, the choice of words has just changed the angle completely. I completely understand the science behind it, and I saw several experiments yeah. myself There are many rice. online. Have you seen yes, the, the same the chaps. Rice? Yeah. Uh, with one rice goes off it's completely. Incredible. And that's absolutely incredible. It's, there's almost a magical element to yes. it. I did see a woman who did that with her um, water. She'd filtered some drinking water, tap water, at home for drinking in the fridge, and she put positive notes yes. on it, and she gave it love, 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 kind of yes. prayed to it kind of thing. It seems silly. Well, no, but um, I know but, many people who pray over their water before drinking it. No, and there's a cultural and religious thing that has been done throughout the years. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the first time. This yeah, isn't yeah, anything yeah. new. Why but what I want to it? ask you, Anna, is if this water is full of positive energy, and I have given it my positive energy, and I consume this water. It'll be better What for are you. the benefits, scientifically? Have oh. there been any benefits? I haven't really looked that far into it, but I think there are benefits because look at the difference in the molecular structure of water that has been exposed to positivity and... See, it looks pretty, but what is the benefit? Well, it looks pretty, it looks healthy, doesn't it? Do you think it looks yeah. healthy? Yeah. I mean, there were some which were really distorted images, and surely that's not what the molecular structure of water should look like. It's going to be better for you than drinking. It's going milk. to be better for you. I mean, no, no, no. I, I don't know whether I'm explaining myself. No, no. You're saying the before properly. and after. If, if, no, if you took water. one, know, if you drank know, the know. negative water, yes. I mean, is there some science behind certain illnesses from drinking a negative water compared to drinking a positive water? I don't know if the studies have been that far reaching. Because to then be it would be well but worth. I saying, think I love you. I think it's worth it because I don't think you have to wait for a study to t to confirm that because from what we've seen already, the information that has already been garnered, it, it, it shows that there is, uh, it changes. So it changes. I just want to understand okay. the benefits of it changing for us. Is, yeah. it, is it that, that by doing so I am feeling better or is there some element to this that makes me feel better? Once it's changed, I think it's both. I think obviously, if you're doing it, there's, there's a bit of a placebo effect to some extent Excellent. because you're you have if you believe in it and you have confidence that it's going yes. to have an impact on you, it's more likely to work than if you're like really skeptical. But I think that beyond your belief about it, even if you weren't to believe in it, it would still have some sort of effect. Like what, you know, people. There's been another experiment as well about with plants. People talking kind yes. of to plants yes. and how I they bloom. And then there's, uh, there's an experiment where they exposed plants to heavy rock metal. Sorry, heavy rock metal fan. Yeah. <laughs> but just as an example, maybe you know, satanic music. And they, or, and they do, they yeah. do. And maybe they're fed just as much, just as regularly, kept in the same climate controlled yeah, yeah. temperatures. And you know, in, in every other way, they've they've been, you know, treated exactly the same. But yet they have not you know blossomed like like the other plants. Maybe they have to take that science further, not to see when it is, when it molecularly it has changed. Yeah. I think it's probably more research it, than we realise. 
how much healthier or happier is or it? Yeah. I think, fulfilled I mean, you become. I think one valuable mess lesson maybe to take away from this is like how often do we try or are we told to try and you know think positively and control your mind and, and at the yeah. end of the day the mind is just so subtle and so hard to control but why not begin with a grosser element like the words that you speak you know. My, my... Say okay I might not control my thoughts because they just run away with me but I'm going to speak you... positively to people to myself about myself that can you know? always be a good thing that is, a, is, a, is a something we can control much more easily and true yeah, but you have and it's a start you know it's a start like with the example that i gave yeah. earlier oh i never have time whinge whinge you know there's me feeling bad about myself no 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 i'm not going to say that i'm going to say you know um but it's so hard though anna last year last program we looked at the fact that people naturally veer towards negative news I put on a, a, a clip of a whole load because of positive things. Because it's addictive, things, no? And people <laughs> naturally veer towards the negative news. Because it's there's the a sensationalist like element. There's a sensationalist element. But I tell you, if I could watch a, an equivalent of news of what's going on around the world, which is more realistic, because the news is not realistic, it's one-sided. And I'm not, I don't just mean the happy, you know, go lucky stories of all the good that people are doing, but maybe more a, balance, a more balanced representation of what's happening. I would sooner sit down and watch the telly to watch that, because I don't watch the news. No, I don't want to. I don't it watch either. the news. I refuse to let it in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I agree. I'm not promoting being ignorant. I was like, you find out with inadvertently. No, ignorance is bliss. No, well, you find out. I want to be aware of what's going on in the world around me, my community, obviously, like yes. all the rest of us. But uh, I'm not going to let that. that you end up getting depressed. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to be selective. There's, there's a saying and like this, in Spanish. I think it's manageable when it's about words rather than thoughts, which are more yeah. elusive. There's a saying in, in Spanish that my husband says now and again, I'll, and I'll say it in English, which is um, you should always speak with um, soft, sweet words as one day you may have to eat them. Oh, you know. Ah, that's a very good one. Say it in Spanish. Siempre debería hablar con palabras dulce y suave. I think it's dulce y suave, or something like that. Or dulce y tiernas, porque algún día puede que te las tenga que comer. Y más seguro que sí. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I love those quotes you, you said. Nice. And the power of words. I mean, and you just see it all around, you know, politicians, the power that they have, with whether you get know, clever use of words to manipulate, how you can incite violence, a hatred. But then again, so a kind word at the right time can change a person's life. It can mend like a broken soul. It can help someone who's grieving. Yeah. And uh, what power we have, no? This is all I'm thinking. And the truth <laughs> is as well, Anna, that so many influential people over the years, like the ones you yeah. quoted, have changed so much with the power of those yes. words have yes. made such an impact um negative and positive yes. we remember both of them yes. at the end of the day mm -hmm. so anyway it'll be interesting follow up see whether if yes when when you change it to that positive vibe there are some health yeah aspects yeah another thing this is just my own thing but sometimes if you just repeat the word like love peace like those kind words how, mu how much better do you feel after doing that for maybe 10, 20 times than if you were to repeat the word hate? It's terrible. And it's true. That's like dislike. when you wake up in the morning, you wake up on a do Monday. Do it, do it. Okay, the your difference. face changes so straight away. You see? I do that. <laughs> I wake up on a Monday and I think, oh my gosh, here we go. And then I think, no, no, Monday morning, good things are going to happen. Happy vibes, morning. Da -da -da, you know, That's great. I go really? to work, I get to work going, and then I think, no. I woke in morning. No, I don't think she's happy. I'm thinking Monday. Get inside, to you. I'm thinking it's Monday. <laughs> but, but you're really, not transmit, got to be but you're transmitting effort. the negativity. Absolutely you're right. consciously and controlling it, which is the benefit. I do that all the time no? on purpose. Just a, to when I'm sure. Create a, a positive <laughs> vibe. A Spanish, a I see you every morning. morning. Yeah. I know, know every morning we meet and other. walk to have work. Have you seen a Spanish movie called Como Agua para Chocolate? See, I haven't seen it, but I've been. A long time ago. I've been told like they they cook in that movie. Um, it's a Mexican film, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, they cook in that movie, and the and the the lady who's cooking, there's at some point she's making a dish, and she's like really happy over all, the mood, uh, mm. and she puts all her emotions in her love. Yes. Yes. love. Like, like, I know people who do that as well. Like, people who eat them pray while they, and they all feel it. really happy, they feel it. and then she does it, and one yeah. day she's crying literally into the food, and when everyone starts eating, they all start starts crying. crying. I'm really? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So it's not a new Let concept. Let me tell you just it's one been thing. around forever. Baking, for example. I've become quite a good baker in my old age, right? And when I was taught to bake by a friend of mine, I'm not going to say anymore, she said, you have to do it with love and positive vibes. Yes. So 
when you're doing it, really think of what you're creating. You're not That's just true. making a cake. You're really lovingly putting your... And I do my cakes like that. They rise really high. No, that, honestly, and... I could have a cake. I could compete with you. <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> I'm trying. <Why> not? Go? <laughs> Moving on, girls. OK, you may have noticed or heard or read just about last month that Gibraltar is going to undergo some changes, some very interesting changes. It's a subject I wanted to debate some time back because we've never had it in Gibraltar, but now the government are moving down that road. So we are looking at very soon... When did you say, Anna? 20... I think it's two years' time, 2019. Two years' yeah. time to co-ed education and there's a massive debate going on as to whether the pros or the cons of either are a good or a bad thing. Change is never a bad thing. Let's have a look mm -hmm. at some of them. Parents often ask me whether they should consider single-sex schooling for their sons or for their daughters. I always try to go back to, do we have research that supports an answer one way or the other? And this is a field where there's actually quite uh, significant research. I'll try to encapsulate it quickly. If you look at all the research in the last 20 years, it basically says if you have a girl, you might want to consider a girl's school experience at some point in her life. And if you have a boy, the research supports co-education for boys. The why of that is interesting. Girls in general who spend some time in a single-sex setting tend to have better self-esteem, better leadership, better achievement in the present and throughout life. Boys who attend co-ed schools tend to do better in terms of social development, language development, and social savviness, I suppose, would be the best way of saying that. So there's kind of a differential uh, of support. Yes for girls, no for boys, but I always end by saying the quality of the teacher and the quality of the culture of the school has more to do with it than whether it's single sex or co-ed. It's a very, very yeah, good point. So let's just run through a few of the pros and cons that I've got noted down, which are gen generally the ones that they're going for. So a good reason to have co-ed. Communication, understanding and respect amongst genders, mm -hmm. it, that improves. Develops equality. Half of the reason why we have battled so long is yes. maybe because we've separated the sexes at such a crucial time um, in their development. It mimics and prepares you for the real world. And I'm Absolutely. a really firm advocate of that one. Yep. Some of the cons, yep. perhaps, it can encourage early experimentation. We all know that sexually you become more uh, in, on tune uh, at that point, so you'll be looking at other things, and that in turn can lead to harassment in a school. That happened to me personally. It can also be distracting for, for pupils. And one thing that we know is backed by science is that boys and girls learn at different levels and different rates in their ages. What do you think, girls? Go for co-ed yeah, or go yes. for single sex? I think co-ed. Co-ed for sure, yeah. but Anna made a really good point before. Well, I've always instinctually I've been <laughs> pro co-ed for years. I think it's great. I think it's yeah. unnatural to separate the sexes. I think as you say, it makes to, it's sort of more since... likely to bring the gender cap close close together because they're treated equally, they're offered the same subjects in school, whereas now I don't think they are, which I think is not a good thing. So all for it in theory. I've got two daughters. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what that lady said in the clip is something that would concern Perfect. me because I have two daughters. So I've always thought in theory, yeah, yeah, co ed, I'm all for it. Better when my kids are finished, <laughs> when my kids are finished with West Side. And um, I mean, I'm still all for it. And my, my youngest is in middle school. So I think the transition for her will be more seamless because she'll go from being in a mixed school all her life. She'll go yeah. from middle school to West Side, not notice the change. My eldest is in West Side. By the time these, um, these changes are implemented, she'll be in the upper years of West Side, having mm -hmm. spent maybe four or five years without boys and, you, and enjoying yeah. it. Because she, I know she really enjoys being, not having the boys there, to be honest, and she's, you know, focused and she's concentrating and studious and, and doing well generally. So she's going to have suddenly, maybe doing her A-levels or GCC is going to be yeah. thrown. It's going to be thrown. Distraction. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm concerned that she might deviate slightly from her academic goals. But I really, I, in theory, I'm still all for it. I just hope that maybe the way they introduce it is done, you know, staggered. So maybe they, so from middle school, they introduce the first year and then and the next year. So maybe my eldest wouldn't actually be, have to have, be living or working in a co-ed school because she'd, you know, yeah. generally pa just it. pass it by. Yeah, I think yeah. it all depends on the child as well. Your daughter works better as, uh, you but know, she's also with a, girl. With a bunch of girls. 
Whereas I don't know whether yeah. my daughter would because she gets on, she's got a lot of male yes. boyfriends, which is not... That's true. Which is quite rare at the age of 13, yeah. but she hangs out with, you know, friends. Yeah, and, but you and were like that. I was the and same. So, was so maybe in a co-ed school, she'd do better. I don't know. She's doing well at the moment, but yeah. I can see it. I think it all depends on the child. Yes. The academics is certainly one thing, and I take on your concerns, and I think they're very real concerns. In fact, it says it here um, that girls and boys have... The, the results in exams and stuff is, is, is all different. But from a social aspect... I think it's great. It's it can only be a it's good normal. thing. It's normal. I mean, we've got it's, kids it's together great. playing together well, I don't in middle school, why and suddenly... then all of a sudden they're on their own through their teenagers, and then they go to university and that's... they're back again with the blokes. But that... And then you've got to go to a workplace yes. and I think mix the rest them of again. the time. It's all mixed. You know, the genders are mixed. You know, you, you marry, you your jobs. You don't you know you, you don't work exclusively with one gender, one sex. So really, for the continuity, it makes total sense. As total you, sense, as you were saying. It's just the way things happen yeah, here. Yeah, I just think, yeah. Good. Even if they go to after-school lessons, but classes, Everything sports, is mixed. It's everything all mixed. mixed. It's mixed, exactly. Even if they're... It's rare to find an a, environment where they're not mixed. Single-sex schools. So. Even more and more sports, for example, rowing was always like a boys' sport, but now they encourage girls yeah, to girls. row, yeah. and they want girls to take part in rowing, so... True. I think nope. it's, it's, it's... And it's important for boys to be among girls and vice versa. Yes. And, and see that girls' opinions are important in debates and discussions in classroom, that they have to sit and be quiet and listen to the girls. And they have to maybe try and understand the female dynamic and where they're coming from and how, what, what makes women tick. Why not start learning <laughs> sooner rather than later? Those, and vice versa. And those years are the great years yes. for them to learn because it's all... The, their sexuality comes yeah, into yeah. play. Their, their gender yeah. choices come into play all during yeah. those years. So you're getting all of that gender equality coming in, being gay or bisexual or any gender isn't such a big deal anymore. They're yeah. growing up and exactly. in all, all of this kind of environment. But that's, so ha that's happening anyway because that's how I think the, the, the because gay we've thing raised nowadays, awareness over the yeah, years. Think, but what we want to do is make it normal. Yeah. 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 That's that's what again the moment wants. you separate people, the, the, their in, natural instinct is to want to know more. They're naturally curious. We're separating them. It's going to make them even more curious. Okay. <laughs> not really, because True. but if you have that constant exposure, they're your friends. Yeah, they're your equals. It's not suddenly the boy that you see maybe at half past three coming out of Bayside. Yeah, huh? yeah. Suddenly more mysterious. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. You know, <laughs> like we used to. Do you know, whereas it's just uh, the, the guy who's sitting beside you in your maths class. Yeah. Well, it's the same as being on a diet and walking past the cake shop every morning, Sue Ellen, <laughs> not being able to have the cake. You can have the cake. <laughs> but if I'm sat and working in the cake shop, I bet you I wouldn't the eat the smell. cakes. Do, can I ask oh. you, do you actually pump out the smell into the street <laughs> on purpose? <laughs> so people want yes. to, to draw people <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, so it yeah, definitely a good thing. And I'm thinking, yeah. okay, where no? A good thing that's there. happening in Jib. Your kids are going to go? Hopefully. Well, my daughter's the same age yeah. as um, Anna's daughter, so... They'll and both be going in together. Probably. They're they'll, friends, yeah, so... Yeah, they'll feel it. They'll be the first they'll, probably to, to, yeah. to experience it. I hope it's Daddies after the will GCSE. be on guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, moving on, we're going to do our final clip for tonight. The divorce selfie. Here's a funny one, and I'm definitely not into any of those things, but uh, take a look at what's trending on YouTube and all of these places now. A divorce selfie? That's ridiculous. This couple from Calgary, Canada, is all smiles in this Facebook picture, celebrating a momentous occasion, their walk down the divorce court aisle, complete with the hashtag divorce selfie. Oh, good for them, you know, I guess. Uh, I think it's pretty weird. I hate selfies. The Facebook post had thousands of likes in just a few days. Shannon and Chris Newman explained their cheerful faces and amicable divorce in the post, saying, we're smiling because we've done something extraordinary. We think anyway. We have respectfully, thoughtfully, and honorably ended our marriage in a way that will allow us to go forward as parenting partners for our children. My first impression was that it was funny and cute. Valerie Tachi is a Manhattan matrimonial law attorney. She says the selfie sheds a positive light on a usually negative event for couples. I like the spirit of the selfie. It shows that these 
these people were able to get through their divorce with a great degree of friendliness and humor. But she thinks it's best to leave the kids out of it. It affects not only the couple, but the entire family. And so the divorce selfie is really about the couple. It's not so much about the kids. Do we really care as a society about whether people get divorced or not? The Canadian couple probably didn't realize the picture would get worldwide attention. The post has since been removed from public view on Facebook. And so it's something that is admirable at the end of the day, because what is admirable, admirable is to break up in a civilised fashion, to put your children first, to ho hold no bad feeling or bitterness towards your partner, and to do that in, in a, an amicable but way. But do you have to tell the world? That's my point. Does I, it really make a difference? Do you have well, to publicise that? Ridiculous. To tell what, the world, what, really. It's just what, gone viral, no? Well, they, they put it on Facebook. I think it's a personal thing. It's not something you have to do at all. Apparently, everyone tell everybody that you're no, getting a divorce. But there's also divorce parties. Hey, there well. is. I know somebody who had one. Right. I still haven't done a divorce cake, though. You haven't oh, done a have divorce cake? Not yet. Is it half a cake? Or? No. I don't know. Anna, you um, have a lot of strong thoughts on that. Yeah, because I've been in that situation myself, and to be honest, I can really relate to the couple in the clip because we, are, you know, thankfully, I mean, I mean, I, I'm an up, I uphold the institution of marriage and all that it's, all its values, commitment, respect, love, and that's what I would promote. But sometimes divorce is a good thing, and we really have to remove the stigma that people, stigma that people have and society still has because there's less of it than there was previously, but it still exists. That you know that, that divorce can sometimes, and it did for me. It actually saved my relationship. I would go that far, you know, and and, and make that make that statement. And it was a, and it was difficult, painful, challenging, all of that emotionally, you know, stressful. And when there's children involved, I mean, it's nothing less than heartbreaking. Absolutely. Let's be honest about this because it's not a decision anyone, I think, anyone will take lightly. It's, it, it, they can't, you know, it's, it's just when there are children involved. So, yes, my experience has been that it's, it, it can be difficult, but it can also be very positive, and change is, is commonplace in the world. It's the nature of the way of the world, you know, and why you know, insist on something that's not working? Why, you know, be fluid, let things go? Obviously, with mutual respect, which is something is fundamental, I, I, in some cases I understand other people become involved and it becomes a whole lot more complicated and that, you know, just brings more issues to the fore. But I think if, you, if, if, if it's done at the right time with and you retain that respect and you still value and appreciate all the qualities of your partner who is now your ex, because you can still go through divorce and love that person, of course you can, Absolutely. you know, then it can be a very healthy thing. But I think your case or what you're saying yeah. is, is quite rare. Well, I'm one. Oh, well, yeah. And look, I'm, yes, I'm the same yes. case. I have a very amicable um, relationship with my ex and the father of my kids, and we had a very straightforward divorce as well. And we have no issues, and our children come first. They're in a very, very good place. And it can be done. The it point is, done. it can be done. Exactly. Does it take some strength of character? Does it take prioritising your feelings? A little bit like what we were talking about before. Yeah. A conscious effort yes, yeah. to hold your tongue, to push aside and those still, jealousies and those compromises and will Absolutely. continue throughout your relationship. You know, you still have to give and take. It's still adults. It's, your children are priority. I was going to say, and your kids are first. The, obviously, the process is painful because it's a bereavement. Yes. You know, you're, you're, grieving, you're grieving the loss of a family unit. You're grieving the loss of your children's future that you imagined your children would always have. That's quite painful. Think... You don't grow up thinking, oh, I'm going to get divorced. You grow up thinking, you, get, you marry thinking, it's right. life. And when you have bring children to but the world... But I don't think people do, you know? It's really sad. I don't think people... people... Maybe less so now. No? Not in Mexico. In Mexico? What's that no. going to do with the They've price? They've got a law in Mexico that you don't... The marriage lasts for two years. And after two years, it's null and void. You can renew or not. That is ridiculous. That is not contract. even a marriage. That is That's that not is a, a bad contract. thing, you know? A renewable that is contract saves them. So I bet there'd be a, so lot, sad. Of I think a lot of money. We've been about taught me. to believe that marriage is for life. Yes. And we've had this program in our it's psyches. It's and, it's and some relations are not meant for life, you know? Okay. And, and why, why do you think you try? Do you think something? And you do Just harm when you. Throwing it out there. Do you think people don't work hard enough at their marriage? I mean. Is that very old fashioned of me to say? No, I don't think it's all-fashioned. Because, I, because a marriage is, a, is, is you have to work at it. I think yes. and, yeah, and there I, are some I, you know, there are many so times. Many people so many stay in marriages where they're not well, happy. That, yeah. that is different. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. And maybe, 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 maybe not. I'm just saying. Like and there's a lot of people that put up with it because they've got kids. Yeah. 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 Because of the kids. That's a whole the kids. No. And they, I mean, they end up living like 20 years of like being miserable. 
And that's not fair either. No. Well, I'd just like to say, because we've got to wrap up, that perhaps for me or for them incluso, the picture, the selfie, wasn't really a celebration of the divorce, but more a celebration of the, the the friendship, how they yes, handled yeah, 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 the, whole, yeah. the whole scenario and that they've gone through something positive or made it positive at yeah, the end of the I day. Can I say one more thing? Yes. At the end of the day, we are responsible for our own happiness. And I Absolutely. think it's very important to take that on board, obviously considering the impact that any decision you have will have on the lives of your nearest and dearest but yeah. you know you know change is 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 good change is good you know and you it's might be the sunset of a period in your life but you know every new stage every new beginning has its beauty and its encanto okay folks well that's all we have time for this evening once again we'll be back with you on monday here live at the gbc studios at 9 30 please join us then good night <laughs>